My name is Doug Adams and I'm a professor in civil and environmental engineering at Vanderbilt University and I'd like to talk to you about why a graduate student might want to come and study in my laboratory. So I study uh, essentially the health of materials and machines and structures. Think about renewable energy uh, for a second, uh, wind power engineering. So right now wind energy is too expensive. Uh, it's more expensive than fossil fuel related energy sources. And why is that? Well, one of the reasons is that wind power systems, wind turbines, wind farms, have uh, reliability issues. Uh, for instance, you could design a gearbox that was supposed to last for, say, 25 years, but it only lasts for six months. And, and the reason for that is because wind varies. The direction of the wind varies. The speed of the wind varies. And all these variations confuse the wind turbine and cause the wind farm to be less productive than it should be, less reliable than it should be, and that drives up the cost of wind energy. And so if we're going to make wind power uh, systems work uh, economically, we're going to need to address this issue of how do you make wind turbines smarter so that they can adapt to the changes in the wind. We embed inertial sensors into the blades of the wind turbine to develop what are called smart blade systems. So these smart blades allow the turbine to respond to changes in the direction of the wind, uh, to, change, to changes in the spectral content of the wind, and by instilling the turbine with the ability to respond to changes in the wind, we can make it more productive, we can make it more reliable, and reduce, for instance, the rate of failure uh, in the wind turbines. The same thing is true, for instance, uh, in hybrid vehicle uh, systems. So the hybrid vehicles, hybrid cars that you drive, that all use uh, lithium battery technology. So lithium batteries, as we know, need to charge and discharge as vehicles are driven in the city, on the highway systems across the country. And that charging and discharging is really complicated. And the batteries don't do a terribly good job of deciding when they should charge, when they should discharge. So we develop smarter batteries. We use acoustic sensors to literally listen to the battery as it's being charged and discharged so that we can assess what its state of charge is and what its state of health is at that moment. And by understanding better and more accurately the state of charge of the battery, looking at, for instance, the vibrational characteristics of the battery cell with the anode and the cathode layers uh, inter intermixed throughout that battery cell, we can do a much more accurate job of estimating the state of charge and therefore the battery management system can do a better job of of instructing the battery on how to charge and discharge throughout its life cycle. So we do this kind of work on a variety of systems including for instance lightweight materials for aircraft so more fuel efficient aircraft uh, that we fly today with with many more for instance composite materials fiber reinforced materials require sensors and sensor systems that tell us if there's any damage in those materials so that we can maintain them properly, inspect them, repair them, and ensure the safety of, uh, of our aircraft. Work that my graduate students actually do involve really sophisticated instruments, sensing systems that include things like digital image correlation for looking at a structural component and essentially understanding the strain field throughout that component by looking at the surface uh, of, of that material. We also use a full field laser velocimetry. These are 3D laser vibrometers that tell us what the vibrational characteristics are across the large component, for instance, a helicopter blade. And by, by using that type of measurement, we can again identify damage beneath the surface or characterize the loading uh, that's present. We use even infrared thermography to look inside of, of materials, uh, composite materials, for instance, for damage that's beneath the surface. So the students get to use a wide range of instruments and do full-scale experiments uh, with those instruments. And the goal in all these experiments is to really study failure, to study how materials and structures and machines fail. So students literally watch failure occur. And then they take that information to develop ways to sense unique signatures that we can use later on to identify damage and prevent failure in those systems from ever taking place. We do this in, again, energy-related applications, but also security-related applications related to aviation safety, uh, military air and ground vehicles, uh, and a number of other applications. 
We have a brand new facility that's opening uh, in 2014. Uh, the Laboratory for Systems Integrity and Reliability, it will be a 20,000 square foot facility. Uh, we will do interdisciplinary research that includes both experimental and analytical, fundamental research, but also research that's applied to full-scale systems, full-scale aircraft, full-scale ground vehicles, full-scale civil infrastructure of various types. If you want to study some of the biggest challenges facing the country like renewable energy production and the security of next generation transportation systems, you should come to Civil and Environmental Engineering at Vanderbilt University. You'll get to do real world experiments on problems that matter.